Well, I think it's time that I finally get this done. The only reason this tractor, this old Ford 8N tractor, does not run is because this generator here has gone out. When I first got the tractor, I don't know, six, seven years ago, way before we moved up here, it ran fine. It charged up, it ran fine, everything. And then it sat for a few years and I went to fire it up, charged battery up, got it fired up, and it wouldn't stay running. It only run for a couple minutes. So I did a couple tests, figured out that charged a six volt battery up, you put a multimeter on it when it's running and you just watch the voltage drop. So it's not, it's not charging. And I've had for about a year and a half, maybe two years, I've had a 12 volt conversion in a box in the garage just for this tractor. I bought it so I could fix it and make it run. But I haven't done it yet because I don't know why. I just haven't done it yet, I haven't got around to it. But it would be nice to have this tractor running so I can use the blade on the back. I've got a set of discs I can do a fire paths with, all kinds of stuff. And it would be nice to have this thing running so I can use it and move it. So I'm just gonna jump in and go for it. Might take a day, might take a week, might take a month, I have no idea. But it's not doing any good just sitting here, so let's get this thing fixed. Sorry about the wind, guys. And this is my instructions. This is a set of instructions that came with. It doesn't say which bracket goes where. It's just kind of, I guess, I guess it's gonna be easy. You just kind of figure out which one goes where and go for it. It does have a new coil. So I thought this, by the looks of the box, was that other box I took out, the uh, resistor. But uh, it's not, so I'm going to put the coil on before I put the alternator in because it goes right here. And then I'll run the wires, it comes with a bag of wires, I'll run those and I will figure out where everything goes by myself, I guess, hopefully. Cross fingers. So I had to modify this bracket. This is one of the brackets that holds the upper part of the alternator on. This notch, has, I had to make that notch to go around this tube that holds 
the spark plug wires and eventually this wiring harness is going to get fed back through there. Maybe. Maybe not. It's kind of a pain in the butt to take the old one out. Anyways, I don't know if this is a bad sign or not, but I have you have to take these two head bolts out to put this bracket on. These two head bolts go through these bolt holes and hold that bracket in there. So I've got antifreeze. As soon as I take these out, that's antifreeze just bubbling out. I, I can't stop it, so I'm just going to replace this as fast as I can. It comes out of both the bolt holes. And uh, I'm hoping that that's not a bad sign. I hope that's supposed to happen. Anyways, I didn't have to notch the bracket as much as I did. But where I had this tube, it was really, it was really tight. The, the spark plug wires were really tight. So I went ahead and notched that bracket a little bit more than I had to. It won't rattle, and uh, I'll have a little bit more space. So hopefully the antifreeze isn't a bad sign. I'll have to research that. Go ahead and leave me a comment if you, if you know about it. And if you're watching this video as a tutorial on how to put a 12 volt system on a Ford 8 end tractor, just shut the video off because this is more of a comedy. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing, and I'll tell you that right now. So don't take my advice for anything that I do to this tractor. I really don't know what I'm doing. Back to the fix. I think I've got everything hooked up, at least so I can get a reading and see if, well, I know it's going to fire up because I'm going to put a fresh 12 volt battery in here. So I'll know if the ignition starting system is wired correctly, just if it cranks over. If it does that, I'll turn the fuel on and we'll see if it fires. If it fires up, then we can put a multimeter on the battery and see if the alternator's working correctly. From what I can tell, this is a pretty easy, simple system. One wire alternator. Um, I did have to connect, let's get off on a little sidetrack here. These three wires right here behind my head and they're all bolted together. Those wires go to the amp meter. I don't have an amp meter that works, it's all broken. So I took it out of the dash so I could go inside and see if I could find one online that was fairly cheap. Um, that way I can get one and put it in, but for now, Two of these wires go to one side of the amp meter and one wire goes to the other side of the amp meter just to show you how much amperage is going through or how many volts are going through your system. So I'm gonna keep this out of the way, make sure it's not touching anything because it's gonna be hot. I'm gonna put a battery in here, make sure I hook positive to positive and negative to ground. As a six volt system is opposite, positive is ground on a six volt system. So I've gotta to remember to hook this up correctly and we'll see if it'll fire. And then we'll get a reading on the, on the battery as far as the alternator, see if it's actually charging and how it's charging. I hope I did this right, guys. I have no idea. Cross your fingers. Let's get this going. Double check our battery here.
full on battery. If this tractor decides to take off, this tire is gonna hit that tree, giving me a little bit of a chance to jump that direction into a safe zone. So I know I'm not sitting on the tractor when I'm trying to fire it up, not the smartest thing. It's in neutral and this tire is gonna stop at that tree, hopefully. All right, so the wires run. It's not pretty, it's not permanent. This is not the way I'm gonna have it. This is just to see if it's gonna crank over. I haven't turned the gas on yet. I'm just gonna see if it'll crank over. Uh, the reason I swapped the positive and negative cables is because you're going from a, a six volt system to a 12 volt system. Six volt system is a positive ground. 12 volt system is a negative ground. The negative battery terminal, if you have top post, the negative one is smaller than the positive. It makes it harder to get them confused. Uh, in my case, the little ends of the cables were made the same so I could just swap them so that I didn't have to pry the negative way too far apart and then try and cram the positive onto a small little terminal. It worked out for me. But I'm gonna hit the starter button here and see if it'll crank over. And if it cranks over and doesn't start on fire, then I'll add gas and we'll see if it'll fire up. And then if it fires up, we'll run some checks on the alternator system to see if it's charging. Cross your fingers. It's been a couple days since I started this, mainly because the battery, this is a battery out of my chipper, and I didn't have a 12 volt battery just sitting around except for the one sitting in my chipper. So I got it out of my chipper, but it was dead, so I had to put on a trickle charger. I charged it and then found out that the battery in my multimeter, the nine volt battery in my multimeter was dead. Now I'm not a mechanic and I'll never claim to be a mechanic, guys. I didn't do mechanics for a living. I was a collision repair body man. So I fixed panels and cut cars apart and welded them together and did all that fun stuff, but I did not do the mechanics side of it. This is not necessarily over my head, but I did learn a ton doing this. The voltage regulator that was on the other side, I thought the kit came with one, so I took it out and put it off the side, and then I found out it didn't come with one. So I put it back in, but then I found out the alternator is all included, it's all one, you don't need a voltage regulator, so I took it back out. <laughs> oh. It's, it's, been, it's been fun working on this rather than regular stuff on the homestead, but I wouldn't, I don't really like getting my hands as dirty and greasy. So if you like seeing stuff like this, old tractors that have been sitting for years and they, they get fired up, somebody figures it out. Ham, Hamilton, Hamilton, <laughs> I'll try not to butcher this out. Hamiltonville Farm. I'll leave a link in the description. This guy will go find a tractor that's, I don't know, been sitting for five years, 10 years. 500 years, I don't even know how long they've sat. And he'll figure out what's wrong with them and get them fired up and running. The guy's amazing. So I'm gonna get some zip ties and some shrink wrap and electrical tape. I've gotta really protect this set of wires right here. Goes to the volt meter, amp meter, something like that. I have to buy another one because my volt meter that was sitting on my dash, that thing was burnt out. It was uh, kind of crusty looking. So these wires go to that when I get it and it just lets you know how many volts or amps or whatever's going through your system so you know it's working but until then i'm going to shrink wrap it up in a ball of tape so it doesn't short out and get all these wires routed correctly so they don't short out and nothing catches on fire and maybe i'll take it for a spin drive around the property or something until next time guys go make something <laughs>